Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's uh, Local Chat, episode 129, I think? Uh, Coming to you live from uh, all of the world. Sorry, I'm just... Jake, do you have a cowbell in your room or something? No, my chair chair is very squeaky. Somehow Will is blowing his mic out now. He's too quiet and blowing his mic out. It's crazy. With his Um, squeaky squeaky chair. (laughs) Um, it's sorry, it's just that squeaky chair is kind of wild. Um, folks, we are here to talk about video games and stuff. Local chat 129, Ian Gibson, Jake Terrio, they're both here. Uh, they're hanging out. We got chit chat time. Chit chat. I don't even have that's how close the wire I was setting this up. I don't even have the doc, folks. I don't have the documents open. Great segue, folks. Wait, are we talking about Alex Jones? <laughs> what? It's not even a good reference. He could have made a Trump reference. Well, but... documents. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! Documents reference is always Alex Jones. No, but I mean, but but the former president is, I think, more in the spotlight right now. Well, yeah, I have to look up not. the Alex Jones documents reference. It was always like we have documents proving the frogs are in the water, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> That's I, that's funny, exactly like, what he said. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's it's so funny that like the frogs, hundred percent top. They are in Alex the water. Jones reference, but you catalog and reference that as not frogs, not gay, not water. It's <laughs> documents. <laughs> <laughs> you know the oh, there's documents. Do- there's documents that <laughs> there's frogs in the water. Like that's that's all that. I mean, you know. it's not even. You don't even. It's not even like the Richard Linklater. How like. He was in, uh, if, if you've seen the Richard Linklater movie, uh, Scanner School Dark, of which is the one I've rotoscoped, he, he, Alex Jones is in it for like 10 minutes, but what? at the time, yeah. So as like so, an, okay. as a character, not as himself, as himself, basically oh, But at okay. the time when Richard Linklater made the movie, he was just like, there's this really weird guy that lives in Austin mm. and he's just a weird character. So he put him in one of his movies. <laughs> basically as himself and it's not until years later that he like went way off the deep end in a bad way as opposed to just being some crank shouting about random things and uh that's just i thought that's another richard uh another alex jones reference you could do but instead it's documents (laughs) we got the documents right here folks um family that's what it says always wants family he's trying to make a family he's trying shooting his 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 loads everywhere trying oh to make families uh that's what those movies is are that what those I haven't movies? seen one yet but i assume i've only seen the first they're one bad. and most of the they're third bad. one they're all bad um i don't or wait know is tokyo drift the here. second one or the third one no it's the third it's one, the third one. too fast it's too furious one. okay yeah so i've seen too the first one and the some of the one. third one movies are bad <laughs> They're really bad. They're terrible. They're not even good bad. They're not even good bad. Okay, uh, who wrote family? Talk about your family. I didn't write it. I Mine's not family. here. Okay, I'm um, just waiting for it. I had a very weird experience this weekend. For the uh, holiday? Which... The no. holiday was on Tuesday. No. No, it wasn't for the holiday. It okay. just happened. It's not um, a weekend, Jake. I'm sorry. I... Can you imagine if July 4th was one of those holidays where they're like, it's always the second, it's always the first Saturday in July. <laughs> July, July 4th on July 7th. And America restructures the entire calendar. And we have like makeup days just so that July 4th always falls on a Saturday. Anyways, uh, that's a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Write that one down. For it's like a Netflix fucking special. David Foster Wallace joke. Oh my God. He could spend an entire fucking chapter talking about the new American calendar. Anyways, um, this weekend, yeah, I dips. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, this weekend. I mean, look, he had an entire chapter no, about move <laughs> militant militant grammarians who would go into grocery. It was like a bunch of school moms. Who were who were like guerrilla 
grammar Nazis. And so they would go into grocery stores and surreptitiously like change the like 15, I- 15 items or less signs to 15 items or fewer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they would like scribble it and they had this whole secret society. And they would eat bugs Anyways, off of people. David Foster Wallace, you know what? A lot of people make fun of Infinite Jest. It's a good book. It's a really good book. Uh, you know what? Fuck talking about family. Let's keep talking about David Foster Wallace. There's this really good bit. You're going to love this. A lot of Who the are you talking takes place. to? <laughs> Everybody. Nobody. Trust me, when I get there, you're going to love this. Uh, a lot of the book takes place at a, like a tennis academy, like a, like a high school tennis boarding school, basically. And the kids on the weekends have invented this game. And basically the way the game works is that you draw the world map on a tennis court and then each person represents a country and then those countries get a certain number of tennis balls and each of them represents a nuclear weapon (laughs) and then they play this like tense negotiation of points and everything until eventually it goes nuclear and then you hit the tennis ball to try and hit somebody else's country with a nuke with the tennis ball and where it lands you get points based on how close it is to population centers (laughs) So it's like this 12 hour like fake nuclear standoff war game that these high schoolers play on a tennis court with tennis balls and the scorekeeper runs around with a computer on a cart because it's the 90s and just to calculate all the scores and get population numbers. That was a really good chapter. Uh, So anyways, yeah, everybody should read Infinite Jest. It's very it's very good. Very fun for uh, the the Nukem commercial from Robocop. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, Let's talk about fake Legos. Folks, I finally got my fake Legos. I ordered them. took like three weeks. Basically what I did, quick recap, talked about it a couple episodes ago. I've been getting into Legos more. Legos are expensive. Legos have always been expensive. They feel like they are about 50% more expensive nowadays. Do you you guys feel like that's a fair assessment? I think that's correct, statistically. It's... it's, uh, and the problem is they they know there is an adult audience now. Oh, well, now so they're they are, they're leaning into it way harder than they ever yeah. were when I was a kid. So, exactly. So the problem is they're turning out fantastic sets and their big sets, which adults can technically afford. But it also just ramps up the extra cost for Lego. So now you're looking at sets and you're like, that's fucking fantastic. I want that. And it's like 200, 250, 300. The fucking Rivendell set was what? Four ninety nine, five ninety nine. It was heavy. Four ninety nine. I think it was four ninety nine. I think Titanic's so, so, still the most expensive one, right? Or is it the Falcon? No, I think it's the Eiffel Tower. I think oh, it's the Eiffel Tower. Right. The big Eiffel Tower, yeah. No, actually, oh, I think Lego. you're right. I think it's still, I think it's still the Falcon, but the Eiffel Tower is the biggest one. Six or seven hundred. Yeah. Let's consult. Right. Um. Let's so, anyways, wanted to buy more Legos. Didn't want to pay Lego prices. Went down a rabbit hole, came up with some Lego brand off off Lego brands that make Lego compatible bricks and sets, etc. I ordered three of them from a reputable website, uh, Your World of Building Bricks. Shout out to them. Finally got them and we did a cool stream this weekend. And folks, they're pretty fucking good. Like the quality is pretty, pretty good. We talked about it a lot on stream, but I'm curious because... Will, right after that stream, you immediately bought one of the near identical kits that I had purchased and put it together recently. What did you think of the quality of Mold King, M-L-U-L-D King? Um, I thought it was good. I think the quality of the bricks and all that sort of stuff is great. Um, yep. I thought I was missing a piece at one point and I wasn't. It was hiding. Um, mm-hmm. I will say, I think the one thing they don't have that lego has is good building techniques uh and we talked about that on the yeah. stream as well but they're just doing yeah. things that you're just like like putting pieces onto other pieces and then putting the pieces next to each other and attaching those pieces together with a, another piece and it's just yeah like, it's a lot it, weird yeah it's a lot of tiny fiddly groups of pieces and it doesn't quite have structural strength to it i mean it, it has enough to put together but it will fall apart a lot as you're putting it together. Um, the thing that I started to hit because I, I built oh fuck. I built four kits in the last week. Now that I think about it um, is something that people had as a complaint. 
and I didn't really pay attention to it until it hit for me. So with Legos, if you do three plates, three plates stacked high equals one brick. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I've noticed is that with some of these other brands, it's slightly off. And it seems like it's only certain pieces that will throw it off. And so as you're putting a kit together, it will go together just fine. But then you'll look at it, and depending on the piece that was used to stack, you can see a little bit of a gap or a bump. So there's either a gap where it's three plates and they don't quite match the same height as a brick or they're a little bit over. It doesn't impact the building, but it's enough that if you look very closely at it, you can tell it's not Lego. Um, And then the other thing I noticed is, at least for... Actually, I think it happened in all three of the kits, all four of the kits that I put together. Some of the colors are off. So you'll have like gray pieces and some of the shapes will be a slightly different color of gray. And it is noticeable. It's like they were printed again, in different batches or something? Yeah, different batches without color quality control between mm. them. But it's, it's more shapes. So like all bricks of the same shape will have the same color, but then a different shape will have a slightly off gray. Mm. Um, mm. But again, it's the type of detail where you have to get within like three, four inches of the piece to tell the problem. Putting it together, no problem. They have some awesome models. Did the, uh, I had a MX-7 uh, or an RX-7. Will, you did the Sprinter Torino, right? Yeah, the AE-86. Yeah. And then I also got, uh, for 40 bucks, I basically got this like 10 inch long Colonial Mark II Viper from Battlestar Galactica, which was cool because it was a community somebody in the community designed it and they sell the plans for it. And then going to this company, they basically provide all the parts. And it's funny. It was, it was 35 bucks for that kit. And just for shits and gigs, I went to Bricklink and I was like, how much would it cost if I bought all these Lego parts from, it was like 70 plus depending on the supplier. So, and it's, it's exactly like you said, there's some questionable building techniques in there and it's not, it was difficult. There was some stuff that was like hard to literally put together because of spacing, et cetera. But at the end of it, it's a really cool kit. So long story short, turns out fake Legos folks in particular, go bricks and mold King. Those two major brands. Hella fucking good. Y'all go buy that shit. They got some good stuff. Jake, are you finally going to, uh, Trey Lego and buy some, some fake stuff? I don't know. I saw, I watched like uh, the latter third of your stream. So I saw right at the end of you building the mini um, Republic gunship and then the start of the car. Um, And then I saw the pictures that you posted and the pictures that Will posted. And I really liked the Colonial Viper, but something about the cars struck me as like, I kind of had to look at it for a second to realize it wasn't a die cast model. Um, and maybe that's just me looking at it in a picture and not being able to see it, you know, in yeah. my hand. Um, but something about it, it was in a w- weird, uncanny valley material wise. Um, so I, I I could see that being the scale because the scale of these cars is probably almost three inches by four or five inches. Mm-hmm. So it's in a it's in a weird scale where they can give you some details but it's very hard for me to look at one of these cars and be able to tell exactly what it is unless it's a very distinct car. Right. So it's it's one of those things where it's 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 in a weird scale. You can't portray all those details. So I could totally see looking at it and being like, is that Lego? Is that something else? Does it look good? Does it not? So it's th- that could be part of it. I'm certainly interested in I mean, there are the, a wide variety of brands that Lego will likely never get a hold of, even though. Yeah. For the longest time when I was a kid, it was always the stuff of like, oh, Lego's not going to do that license because it's too violent or whatever. But now Mm. they really seem to be kind of not backpedaling on that stance. But if it's associated with a brand they already have, like Avatar being connected Mm -hmm. to Disney, now we're starting to see Avatar sets, even though that's like certainly far more violent than Lego would have ever been willing to do in like the early 2000s. Um, But I've seen like a lot of stuff, fan designs. I would, I'm interested in this idea of the colonial Viper being a fan design that then they decided to sell down the road. Um, 
because I think there's a lot of room there for stuff that I would be definitely interested in. There are, I've seen a lot of fan made Horizon Zero Horizon Zero Dawn sets. Like they they've yeah. got the the uh, tall neck set that I have over here, but I've seen like Thunder Jaws and I've seen the Corruptors and a lot of really cool kind of neat um, stuff of a similar scale. Um, but yeah, I'll just have to take a look and see what there is to yeah. see. I think I it's it's uh, I'm glad you bring up the and then do the my MOC, penance the the MOC the mine my own creation type stuff which is community designs I what I need to find I only did a very cursory search for it but it's got to be out there so for one of these MOCs again which it means my own creation it's custom Lego community designs you can go to Brick Lincoln you can say here's the part list give me all these bricks and Legos etc. I need to find that equivalent, but for Go Bricks or Mold King, which mm-hmm. are the two manufacturers that seem to be very good out of China that I've tried, because that would make it so much easier if you could literally just take any part list, go to a website and say, give me these parts, price it out and ship it to me, because then you don't have to go through um, the Colonial Viper I got because the company was already packaging it and offering it as this is the community design, here are the bricks for it, etc., it would be really cool if there was a mechanism for me to provide a part list of my own to mm-hmm. one of those manufacturers and they yeah. ship it out to me. Yeah. Um, on that note, before we move on to anything else, my one bit of Battlestar related uh, discussion was that uh, for the 4th of July, we were going to do a, a double feature of Jaws and Independence Day. And then by the time we were done with Jaws, we're like, Independence Day is really long. Let's watch that tomorrow. Um, but I forgot that. Uh, the actor who plays Laura Roslin, the president in the Battlestar reboot, is the yeah. first lady in Independence Day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So in yeah, that world, that. that presidential world. Yeah. yeah. That's a great. That's a good movie. It's solid. It's super it's campy. Solid. But it's I yeah. think it's ro- probably Roland Emmerich's best movie. His most coherent, at least, structurally I think and otherwise. After tomorrow. No, no. I'd have to or look at his fall. list. Did he? Did did he? Did he do the Patriot? Yes, yes. That was prior, prior oh. to Independence See, Patriots, Day. Patriots, Patriots in the running. Yeah, I think it's it would weird. be that because it's certainly not 2012 or Moonfall or no. Midway. You know, Midway, or Midway was better than I thought it would be for ten thousand BC. Oh, fuck that. He's he's a rare instance of the more movies he makes, the worse he gets. Mm. And it's not because of lack of control or anything. It feels like he has more control than ever now. Well, especially because uh, Moonfall was independently financed. You uh, guys were talking uh, about this on a previous yeah, episode. So I, I, yeah, I watched terrible. it Friday night, I think. It's real bad. Saturday Saturday night? But I agreed Saturday well with night. what you were saying, that some of the world building elements were really interesting but just so clumsily integrated and executed yeah it's it's a it's an f of a movie but i think you could re-edit it to be a c i think you could oh sure it to a good c yeah um and yeah the world building stuff's cool the fact like i didn't know it was going to be this but like the like the like bad guys like it's not the moon doing it. There were bad guys attacking the moon. Like mm-hmm. that concept. The nano machines cool. or whatever. The AI nano machines. It's yeah. always AI. And but yeah. remember, get Kaspersky and you're, you'll be okay because those ads were everywhere in the movie. <laughs> um, also, if a tree falls on you, you're fine. Just you're wait fine. for the moon to come around and you can pick it up off of yourself. Uh, and yeah, the get the wild. space shuttle into orbit. <laughs> and get the space shuttle into orbit without getting rid of the space station. Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah um, the movie was just like oof. real bad. Oof. My oof. last little thing here in the chit chat section is the Humble Bundle. I purchased the 3D printer Humble Bundle. Uh, and audio listeners are going to love this portion because I printed these cool guys. Is that a, is that a dwarf? It's a dwarf. For your fortress? It's a dwarf. He's so cool. Uh, this guy's cape got messed up. But I also printed this little dog in armor. He's a little oh. guard dog. Armor oh, dog. Yeah, look at that. And then I also, this guy's, um, his staff broke, but I had to fix it. But, you know, these are like, I don't, I doubt you can tell from the video, but they're like super 
like crisp and well detailed. Um, oh, that's I was like I, that's a little yeah, that's a little surprising just because sometimes I bought like a big music bundle, like like royalty free music bundle from Humble Bundle, and I was like awesome hundreds of songs, and it was just like the most generic barely usable even by royalty free standards so sometimes those humble bundles get you a lot of shit that is not that good yeah i've got a lot of games in my humble bundle and i've played like a third of them yeah i was i was surprised genuinely and the scale's nice and big too i I mean i didn't i didn't change these at all i just put them right into the program Mm. and printed them and um but and there was a lot of like set stuff as well so like taverns and intense and, and stuff so it'll be nice i can just scale it down for kind of whatever tabletop stuff and i can also just uh practice painting on these which will be cool. the nice part of doing that um yes that was the chit chat section now before we go into games jake terrio reviewed a video game oh fuck using oh. the brand new patent pending subpixel rating system um it's jake would you like to tell us what game you you reviewed yeah i mean i i haven't seen the results of the survey but the game was uh strikers 1945 2 a oh vertical goodness. scrolling shoot 'em up from from the late 90s i was i was thinking like why is it called that and they were probably like strikers 1945 perfect year awesome great for it and, and then, then they did you know, a sequel. it does so it does so well and a third like, one. we need a we need a sequel and they're like fuck we should have called it 1944 fuck you know <laughs> yeah it's strikers 1945 2 which is my favorite of the 3 in the strikers 1945 series um this and you said this is a vertical scrolling a shooter, vertical scrolling right? shmup yeah from the 90s so it was originally an arcade title that got ported Mm -hmm. to things like the playstation uh and and i think the neo geo um and Mm -hmm. now it's on switch oh that's cool and you can play it vertical yeah i played it well i originally i played it this was a game that i discovered in doing my research for the skybox video i I didn't end up using any footage of it because it doesn't have like a skybox as you would traditionally think um, but I played it on a emulator, a PlayStation emulator, and then I was like, "Is this on the Switch?" And it was. Ooh, that's yeah. nice. Sorry, I don't mean to sidetrack us a little bit, but you said you discovered, found out about this game researching the Skybox video, mm-hmm. and my mind immediately went to, "You didn't, you didn't know about World War II in 1945 before you started <laughs> working on your video?" <laughs> when did the war end? <laughs> What happened in 1945? Girl, 1945. Uh, So so anyways, this is our irrefutable, cannot be questioned, 72 point (laughs) review score. That's a terrible way to put it. It was a long survey. 72 question, irrefutable, objective review score. Scale of 0 to 100. Strikers, 1945 2 scored. Jake, what do you think it scored? I don't know, because there were some categories where I was like definitely ranking it lower. And I had yeah. like watched most of your videos, so I kind of knew how some of the metrics were gonna go. Okay, gotcha. Um, gotcha. I'm not sure. I'm gonna guess between fifty and sixty. It's pretty close. It scored fifty-two. Ooh, uh, yeah. which is a solid. That's a solid seven on our scale. <laughs> uh the highest category was peer review, where it scored a seventy-four out of a hundred. Mm. Um Damn peer review because uh gamespot gave it a 58 ig and a 73 pc gamer nintendo life etc i gave it a 90 mm. which is very high peer review at the time um its lowest category as i scroll through here real quick apologies <laughs> it does it does not have uh, multiplayer no, but i didn't it's fill low- any of those out yeah, that's excluded. Its lowest category was story with a 44. This game actually, it didn't have any knockout categories. It basically scored between 40 and 70 in mm-hmm. pretty much all of the categories. Um, that does put this game as currently the third best game of all time, but also the worst game of all time. <laughs> We've got Firewatch at the top with 81, Battlebit Remastered with 67, and then Strikers 1945 too with 52 uh the review system 
I think it remains undefeated. It, <laughs> it is still it's still working. Now, d uh, I, I, what I wasn't sure about was how what how how is it weighted for original uh, selling price? Because because it was published yeah. as an arcade cabinet first, I tentatively put between three and four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the way we did this was we said that. Uh, I believe we said that. Shit, how did we do this? Sorry, you know, I'm, just, honestly, I'm checking my math right here. Not to, not to, not, I don't know if this would change anything, but I would say the price of 1945 Strikers 2 would Strikers be... Strikers 1945 too. 50 cents. I don't think it would be... I mean, 25 or 50 cents. Well, it's, it is, it is basically a ratio, it is an hours per dollar ratio. So mm. it is how long does it take to beat the game and how much did you have to pay to get that many hours of content? So, for example, I'll give Firewatch as an example. It costs twenty dollars. It's 12 or so hours. So you're paying uh, it's one dollar for point six hours. Mm. And then the way we did it is is a one to one ratio as in a sixty dollar, sixty hour game is a one hundred on the scale and you can't go above a hundred. But mm. if you're below an hour per dollar then that cuts into your score. So uh, Firewatch, because it's 12 hours, but $20 is 0.6 hours per dollar. So therefore it scores 60 out of 100. Mm. For Strikers, <laughs> the MSRP, according to Jake, because it's an arcade cabinet, $3,500 takes five hours to beat. It got a zero. It was technically a, <laughs> a, a 0.1 out of 100. See, so it I, rounded down to a zero. I think, I mean, you can't redo it because the system's infallible, but it, <laughs> I think it should have been 25 to 50 cents because you theoretically see, could get your full five hours out of that. Sure, but I was but how considering do you get your it like on the game. Yeah, I was considering it from the standpoint of like who who is actually buying the well, product. So, I mean, factor in some gas money, uh, <laughs> get into the arcade. Maybe uh, we should just uh, strike arcade games from this completely. Well, that I mean, was the, arcade think, games aren't real games, anyways. So <laughs> that's true. Because I, I, I mean, I, I waffled. I waffled yeah. about on whether or not to put the theoretical price of the cabinet, or like when it got ported to PlayStation, and it was like forty dollars or whatever. But yeah. Either way, I don't think that would have impacted the score too much. Mm. But fifty-two for me. For a solid arcade game on an objective zero to 100 scale, that, feel, that, that feels right, right? I'll say as far as a pitch goes, the whole idea of it is that it's immediately after World War II and there's, another, there's a new faction rising in that has the end boss of every level is like a big <clears throat> mech. And it's all like creatively like it comes out of a boat or it comes out of like a blimp. Wait a minute. Who's this faction, though? It's not not the Nazis. Is it the Wehrmacht? But there are no swastikas in the game. Because <laughs> they had to release it in Germany. But one of the bases, one of the bosses is it's, called like the Rommel something. So it's not it's, not the Nazis. It's my, old, it's my old nemesis, the Syrian Socialist Nationalist Party. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the art. The, all the art design is very good, though. So I would recommend at least for a dabble. Yeah. So anyways, thank you for, for thank participating you. in the system. Um, I apologize for last place, but also congratulations on third best of all time. Yeah. And in conclusion, the rating system still stands. We mm -hmm. haven't broken it yet. It still That's works. Perfect. It's infallible. <laughs> um, I, I'm so tempted. I really want to review a game, uh, but I don't think let... I don't think we're allowed to. Yeah, I don't think we're allowed to because uh, I would give yeah, it a perfect. I mean, I mean Factorio. <laughs> You know, you know how it works. <laughs> there so. is there is a plus one point to your total overall score if you are like Factorio. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I like that there was one that's just like, would Kyle Bailey like this? <laughs> Maybe. That's a plus one, too. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, OK. Moving on out of the chit chat, chit chat section into the frying pan and into the fryer. <laughs> Uh, turn it on high heat and let me bake because it's time for games you've been playing. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You in, so it's in the frying pan and then you lower <laughs> the pan into the fryer. Yeah. That's some fucking YouTube recipe right there. I'm frying the frying pan. Um, we are here 
I'm going to go first because y'all been talking for a bit and uh, mm. I feel like talking for a bit. Uh, so get your, I can't say that word on air. Uh, Final Fantasy seven. I started playing this week. Um, the, I, the remake or the, the original. Um, I stopped playing it. Um, I stopped playing it because it was running a bit weird on the steam deck. The disc wasn't quite fitting in to the screen. Uh, and the, the, every sound effect was clipping, uh, and crackling <laughs> and, um, somebody put a bunch of Vaseline on the graphics. So I was just like, oh, this just looks so weird. This isn't as good as all under two. Um, and the other thing I, it turns out, um, when did JRPGs get so complicated with their, with their pretty active, early. pretty early. Yeah, I know. With their active, uh, not turn-based combat here, um, absolutely. It's, not, it's. I mean, I hear you complain, but it's also not that bad compared to like Final Fantasy 15, which was a lot, a lot going on. But this, okay, shut the fuck up, Will. This game didn't immediately grab you with aesthetics and story and characters. No, it did. It was. It was great. I fucking nuked that. part of a city like oh, yeah. what, what the fuck um and there was a train within the first five minutes which yes. literally should be on our review scale for a plus one there uh does oh, your game fair. have a train in it um but yeah the the sort of combat was stressing me out i couldn't like look away from the screen at all during yeah. combat i had to like stay focused during it uh and that was really annoying um i turned it to the wait mode and even the wait mode they'll like attack you once but and i learned as soon as you select like the character to um do something it'll make the other characters wait and also why am i allowed to attack my fellow members of my party um because i just like quickly was going to select the other people and just selected and threw a grenade or whatever it was at Cloud. Actually, sorry, his name is Garbage. Is it because some and... characters can heal. Yeah, I guess. So Garbage. I, I mean, I'll go back to it. I, I think I might play the Xbox version. I own it on the Xbox Series X, and I won't be able to play it on the Steam Deck or anything. But that I don't kind of want to figure out all the emulator problems. So Garbage and Randy Newman will be back uh, <laughs> to fight again uh, in wherever how, i was how far did you make it like what was the story beat you dropped off on um i think we were on our way out of the i think it blew up and then we were it's still fairly early something i played for maybe an hour because i i think i played maybe 10 or 11 hours i got i did a little bit i got to the casino which is outside the city and then i dropped it from there i think my problem was just the the combat system like you're saying it is a bit outdated it's not awful but it's a it's it's a bit to go back to and also it reaches a point where you feel a little under leveled and so you need to grind which means you just need to run around for like an hour doing random encounters with this combat system that i didn't particularly enjoy um which was a shame because i feel like the story and the characters and the design of that game fucking rips it's 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 a really cool game. I can see at the time it was probably killer. Going back to it, it's a bit, a bit, a bit outdated. The remake, I, I probably played five or six hours of the remake. I think the remake is too new. It's, it's great on its own. I want a middle, you know. Yeah. I want, I, I want the Mass Effect Legendary Edition of Final Fantasy VII is what I want, and I don't think that's ev ever gonna. Maybe in twenty, thirty years. But it's just a shame for me personally. I want that middle ground. They got too good with the remake and they haven't really done anything to the original other than poured it everywhere. So I, I totally understand you falling off of it. I just thought you would have more tolerance for me than tolerance for it than I did. Uh, no. So, I mean, I mainly dropped it because of the, the emulator issues. Like, uh, I'll go back to it. Oh, okay. but it was like it, it. it is on Switch. It's cheap, I think. Yeah, I mean, I have oh, it on Xbox. It. I don't mind playing it there. It was just, like, super frustrating because I didn't know that was the system. So I was just, like, going to do, like, watching a TV show while I was doing the mm -hmm. fight. And I was like, why am I almost dead? Um, oh, because I've been getting attacked this entire time. Uh, speaking of yeah. getting attacked the entire time, Valkyria Chronicles. I bought this on the Steam sale for $5. 
And folks, let me tell you, this is one of the most difficult video games I have ever played in my entire life. <laughs> um, I was on what? like mission three and I tried it about five times and and died every single time um, during your is there, turn. Is there, is there a difficulty slider? Not I that remember. I could find. Uh, maybe when I was selecting the game. Uh, because I went and played a different one and that had a difficulty selection. But um, yeah, the mission every time, well, whenever you play the other characters, the enemy is always firing at you. So even when you're yeah. like walking around and stuff, they're always firing at you, um, which is a bit weird. This like sort of active shooting at you. And then your sometimes it doesn't work anyways, but I, I the game felt really good. It looked really good um like aiming and shooting was fun the systems were cool it was just that like i couldn't do anything or i couldn't figure out what the the thing was telling me to do i did look it up and everyone complains about that with valkyria chronicles they're like it's so hard um they want you to play those missions a very specific way to do uh -huh. things in a very specific way That's and it's no fun yeah it doesn't feel good um so then i went to valkyria chronicles 4 which is the other game I bought during the Steam Summer Sale. And that game is a lot easier and a lot more fun. So I am like four, three or four missions into that and enjoying it a lot more. Uh, the combat seems a little bit better uh, and more refined. I, I think four came out and then they remastered one in four's engine because they look identical. Um <laughs> And so, but yeah, four I'm enjoying. I, I haven't really dove into it that much to, um, like, if I'm going to keep going with it or not. But it it at least felt a lot better than one did. Uh, and then the game I settled on uh, because I was at that point I was just like I just want turn based. Like I want something that I can take my turn. If I'm distracted, I'm not getting shot at. Blah blah blah. So I went back to Steam World Heist, which I was about two hours into. And now I'm about six hours into and Steam World Heist is really good. It feels good. The characters are great the story. You can kind of pay attention to. You get the broad strokes. You fly around. You get your three stars in every mission. You unlock things. You buy things. You get new equipment. It's is there's no muss or fuss. It's all works out for you. Uh, and you're just getting better and leveling up and doing fun missions. Uh, I did actually do a mission that was genuinely really difficult and I had to lower the difficulty, but I realized my difficulty was raised up pretty high and I guess I must have done that when I started the game. So uh, it made the one mission I did much easier because there were like 50 enemies on the screen and I was like, what is happening right now? I can't <laughs> kill all of you. I did pull off a great shot where I... Um, one of the characters has the ability to shoot through multiple and I had given him like a critical plus two and a sniper rifle and he has focus if he doesn't move. So uh, he shot through like five or six guys and they all died nice. and it was fan nice. freaking fantastic. Um, a great video game. Uh, those are the games I played this week. Um, Ian Gibson, Hi. how is the battle? of battle bit going you know what i keep playing it keep talking about it um don't have much more to add just uh first thing just talking about where i am in my personal fps journey with this game um i i feel like there are multiple levels of playing an fps um in terms of one's journey through the game especially a multiplayer fps there's like the introductory stage where you're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know these fucking maps. I don't know these guns. And you're you're kind of you, you suck. You know, you're not used to the game. And then there's the second phase where you're like uh, you're getting better. You start to understand the maps a little bit. You're getting some good kills and you're like, wow, I'm improving. I'm doing good here. I'm enjoying this. This is fun. There's the third phase where you kind of plateau where you're like, I'm not getting any better. I'm not getting any worse, but I'm just doing the same things over and over again and then there's the fourth level which is like the end game in a way where you're just like no i actually am getting better i'm putting in the practice hours now i'm in the end game mechanics and all that shit so i'm now firmly in the second stage where i no longer suck um i somehow got my kill death ratio up to like a 0.85 which wow. is 
pretty good, good for me, especially like a multiplayer FPS where like the especially the first couple hours of Battle Bit, I was just like getting a kill maybe every third life. But now there's moments where I'll get multiple multiple kills per life. Um and it's a lot of fun, you know, enjoying the AK-74, finding what weapons work for me. And when they work for me, then you're unlocking stuff faster. I did happen. I have started experiencing a bit of the meta right now. Um, let me there's there's two things that have contributed to the meta. So one is that. Your character has armor and backpack and belts, and it's kind of weird because normally you can't fucking touch that stuff in in a battle battlefield type game you're just touching like your loadout like your weapons and stuff mm -hmm. but on a lot of the characters you can choose if you have light medium heavy or no armor and depending on your class depends on which access you get to it then the backpack is like how many secondaries do you get how many rockets can you take with you and stuff so the the other thing that's contributing to it is that some of the throwables in particular like c4 and claymores and stuff is a lot of fun and they work really well if you know what you're doing with them so the meta right now that some people are playing as is it basically flash, basically the flash with C4. Um, and basically what they're doing is they're playing as the medic class. They're stripping all of their equipment and armor off. So they move like, I want to say twice as fast as the normal person. Jeez. And then they're just running around with C4 and SMGs and that's it. So it's literally like you'll be in a fight and you'll be shooting at people and you'll see them like running across the road. And all of a sudden somebody just fucking zips across the road and then they come at you and they're like fucking dodging and weaving. And like you can't get a shot on them because you're aiming down sights and you're not used to having to track a target that's literally twice as fast as everybody else. And they're just like running into a building, throw C4, run out of the building, blow it off. And it's just like they're just fucking wiping people. And it, it doesn't feel like the game is broken because they're a glass cannon like they're very they have very little health they have very little ammo etc and it's so cool to see people start to twist the game because again the game's only been out like two weeks or so and to see people start to discover this meta and play with it live and having been there since day one it's like oh i start to see how people are are, are experiencing the game a little bit you know figuring out where to put the grappling hooks on parts of the level to get better positioning etc so it's a lot of fun playing that and um, I do need to resend something I said earlier about the game, <gasps> if I may. A retraction. I previously said this game's this game's good. It may just be me. It's not just me, folks. This game sold 1.8 million copies. I've been thinking Wrong. about it more, and it may be a game of the moment. <gasps> but you know what? What the fuck else is game of the year? This is going on the nomination list. Oh, oh boy. My God. It's on the list. It's probably not going to win. It could be in the top 10. There is a reason why this game is, is resonating so well with the gaming community this year. And I think in a vacuum, the game is not that amazing. But the way the community has reacted to it and the way it's been able to have a presence because of how much the rest of the games industry is fucking up right now deserves recognition so this is going on the 2023 game of the year nomination list wow what an incredible moment there folks we'll be right back with uh battle bit with ian after these messages uh no that's that's um you know i would i would um you know that is a thing that yep mm -hmm. yeah jake <laughs> yeah no I'm well kidding. i wanted to hear about <laughs> ian's other game because I, I wasn't I able know. to watch the stream I know, I know. Ian, oh. what else have you yeah. been playing? So the other game I've been playing is, uh, it's like a, how do I describe this? It's 254 player multiplayer FPS game. <laughs> it looks just like Battlefield. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Mars First Logistics. Um, yeah. So the best way to describe this is it's kind of a pastel retro aesthetic Death Stranding meets Gary's mod meets tears of the kingdom vehicle building meets simple package delivery physics sim type of thing. Um, let me, let me explain it a little bit more than that, which is basically you're on Mars. There's a whole bunch of bases and stuff and, uh, you know, airport, uh, green, greenhouse, uh, fucking college, just weird little buildings all over Mars. 
and they're like, hey, I've got this crate full of apples. Can you deliver it to this other place that's like 400 meters away? So you're driving a little rover. You get to on the fly redesign the rover based on parts you have. And so, for example, the, the crate full of apples, you have to design some sort of vehicle that picks up the crate full of apples and holds it in such a way that the apples don't bounce out. And then you have to drive across the uh, either hilly or rocky or cliffy or mountainy terrain of Mars without dropping the apples or destroying the crate, etc. and deliver it at a location. That's all it is. I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's very good. So um, it's it's just a lot of fun. Like on the stream the other day. So there's a couple layers to it. Number one is you have a whole bunch of mechanisms on your vehicle that are like rotators and pistons, etc. Mm -hmm. And different different grip mechanisms like vice jaws or like fingers or hooks or things. And so there's all these weird little things like um, just to throw some examples out, like early on, you have a watering can that's on top of a shelf. So you need to build some sort of arm that can articulate up and like hook the watering can. But the other cool thing the game does is at any point in time, you can rebuild your vehicle or reset your vehicle if you accidentally flip over and the package won't disappear. It'll just get dropped nearby. Um, so, for example, I've had situations where. For example, the watering can. Um, I just built a vehicle with an arm to push it off the top of the shelf. And then I immediately rebuilt my vehicle to clamp it on the ground. So I didn't need one vehicle that had to do both. I could just rebuild my vehicle for the situation of where the object is. Um, and there's just all these like really weird, <laughs> weird little cool scenarios that happen with it. And I mean, they're intentional in a way. Like one of them was like, get this umbrella, bring it over here. I'm like, cool, let's get this fucking umbrella. So I go to this warehouse and there's a there's a door on the warehouse and the umbrella's inside. I can see the umbrella. It's sitting on top of a shelf in the warehouse. But the warehouse door is like very short and wide. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I have to build this like rover that has like a like literally like a four four axis arm on it with a clamp on the end of it but it has to fold basically completely flat in order for me to get into the to the warehouse i get in the warehouse i pick the umbrella up i pick it up off the shelf and this fucking giant beach umbrella immediately opens up <laughs> and i'm like there's no fucking way that's fitting through the door so i had to like <laughs> you could you could just reset the package so the package goes back to its original position wherever it was and i had to like redesign my clamp so i could reach over and like clamp it in the proper spot so when i picked it up it didn't pop open Amazing. and that was a lot of fun they add complications where <clears throat> where basically when you get to the destination there's like this yellow dotted box and that's where you have to place the object. So a lot of times, like the crate of apples, I've got it stuck to the front of my vehicle. I just drive through the box. And as soon as the object is fully within the box, it goes boop, 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 and it's done. Right. Um, until you get there was like this giant fucking trophy. Like this trophy was probably like 10 meters tall. And it's like the generic, you know, like bell shaped trophy with the two handles. And they're like, deliver this trophy over there. I'm like, cool, let's do this. And I grab the trophy and I like sling it on my back and I've got it hooks on it. And I'm just kind of like weirdly fucking carrying it across this like landscape. Drop it a couple times, have to pick it up. And I'm just weirdly holding it. I get to where they want me to deliver it. And they're like, OK, put it on the fucking pedestal. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what? Like the way they have the yellow box on top of a pedestal that's like two or three meters off the ground and the way the box is shaped the trophy has to be upright. So I had to like put down the trophy and redesign my vehicle to like proper to be able to pick up the trophy and orient it properly and put it on the pedestal. Um, and it's just, it's, it's really, really fun. Um, I spent the last 30 minutes of that stream the other day, grabbing a bag with a goldfish in it out of a pond aquarium, 
but it was like below level. So I had to build this rover with a rocket that I could fly through, land in the water, flip upside down, have enough buoyancy, but also a catch mechanism to catch it and then lift it out. And at the very end, like literally 30 fucking minutes to get this fish bag, I finally get it out. But then I drop it in this pit in the middle of these cliffs <laughs> and i'm like i can't fucking retrieve that <laughs> like the game is is very challenging the building is very good it's not the best building ever honestly i think tears of the kingdom is spo spoiling that a bit because of how approachable but maneuverable it is and there this is a little bit more difficult than tears of the kingdom but it also feels just as satisfying when you're building cool stuff and there's some stuff like rockets are way overpowered right now so there's some cheesy stuff you can do to, to make the game easier as well. It's fantastic. Highly recommend it. It's going on the Game of the Year nomination list. It's very, oh very good. Goodness. Really? Oh, Both man. of his yep. games? Yeah, I did like four or five missions. Um, it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm on the mission. You have to you bring a crate somewhere and then put the crate onto the shelf is what the... Uh, yeah, is what the goal is, and I got there. Um, the one before it was super fun because you had to transfer this giant steel beam. So I clamped the steel beam and then rotated it backwards onto my back yeah. and just held it as I was driving with it. It was pretty wild. On on the stream the other day, I, I did a finger technique. I unlocked these things where they're they're basically like miniature pistons, and so I just like put these little tiny arms on either side of the 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 steel beam, and it's hollow on the inside so then i just put like fingers into it i like pop out shoot out these fingers and it's like a chinese <laughs> finger trap and i just kind of gently lift it off the ground and go drive it oh. like it's it's very cool how flexible you can get with all this different stuff you can get up to speed too you can go pretty quick i i almost made it to orbit the other day and i oh i think goodness. you can the, the limiting factor is that there are towers and as you unlock the towers you get more access to the map an access as in if you go to an area where you don't have enough towers unlocked, you will lose your drone signal because I guess mm. you're supposed to be a drone uh, remote pilot. So that was literally the only thing preventing me from getting literally into a stable orbit <laughs> going fast enough and high enough was that I got too far from the towers. It's 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 awesome. That's wild. It's also cool. Like when you deliver stuff, you see the results of it as you deliver it. Like, yeah like yeah like there's a reason for you to do it um which is like really they'll, they'll they'll build the building or add something to it like the beach umbrella i delivered the beach umbrella it was for a resort like a pool resort and so they like built it up and the beach umbrella was you know uh, next to a chair next to the pool outside and i was like oh that's cool i delivered I like that. that a lot yeah, yeah it's cute it's, awesome. it's cute in the way like untitled goose game and um but better uh no i i'm I, I said cute um and like stuff like that <laughs> yeah i just i have a grudge against some titled goose game yeah because it's better than mars first logistics just all uh, the fucking normies fucking normies blowing that game up <laughs> stop blowing a goose uh the game won so many awards <laughs> yeah because it's perfect uh what if, jake what if you didn't have to kill people in video games what if you could honk that's today's piece game. about it the untitled goose game a surprise video could... game crash planes into other planes well bullets. i want to talk about the other two down. first because they i have far less to talk about with the other two than about ace walk combat a book on a leash? um uh <laughs> so uh i mentioned this a little bit in the discord i played like an hour of need for speed unbound and honestly i thought the driving in 2k drive was better <laughs> Um, or at that. least more approachable it what what really got me was they did like in the like the little tutorial drive they're like here's how you drift and i like did the thing and i'm like wait i did that totally wrong and then they never like i wasn't able to like redo that moment and i never kind of was able to figure out how drifting worked maybe because i'm just a big idiot but it's, it's a bit arcadey the way they do it it's not i don't want to say it has to be realistic but it's it's not the type of drifting where you're like, oh, you actually do have a little bit of like, like Mario Kart 8 is like, yeah, you do have to drift. You hop to and drift you, and you have to get the yeah. tires. Yeah. But um, whereas Need for Speed is a lot like, oh, press this button or do this weird little jiggle and it'll yeah. put you in drift mode. And it's like, yeah. fuck off. So I, I liked the um, a, as we're still kind of culturally feeling the the shock waves from Spider-Verse 
I liked kind of the artistic presentation of <laughs> the game. What? Are you going to disagree with me and say that this was not influenced aesthetically by Into the Spider-Verse? No, I don't disagree. I just, I've never heard somebody put it so fucking dweeby before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, that's, we could get into more technical specifics of it, but that's, I think, in the broadest yeah. strokes, uh, a good yeah. reference point. Um, but no, I was not thrilled by Need for Speed Underground. I think the last Need for Speed game I really enjoyed was Need for Speed Carbon on the GameCube. Um, yeah, I could see that. We 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 talked a little bit about this in the community Discord, um, where I was okay with Need for Speed Unbound. And I want to say okay as in I didn't think it was terrible, and I didn't think it felt terrible. Not because I think you're wrong or I'm right or any way, mm. but because the previous game, Need for Speed Heat heat which was the one set in miami and need for speed most wanted which i believe was the one before that those have felt much worse so it's like this reverse boiling frog situation where they are getting better but the fact that the simple fact that they have gotten better compared to the previous terrible feeling games made me incorrectly believe that it felt good but Mm. it didn't you know so it's like like as soon as you brought it up i was like I can't defend my feelings on this because he's right. It doesn't feel good. I just think it feels good because it felt worse before. And right. it, so it's weird. I think people appreciated this game. And and I do think this is a good effort for that, that series because it is better than what they were doing before. They were kind of just going down, down, down. And then they found this rut and they're like, what if we just keep making this trash game over and over again in the exact same way? And they weren't, they were, they kept doing that. So this is their first like handhold to pull themselves out of the hole that mm. they've dug for themselves. So I can appreciate it for that. But at the same time, you're totally right. You know, pretty much the only interesting thing here is the art style is is pretty cool how mm-hmm. it's baked in. And because very different it. for the series up until now, especially. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't think I'll go back to it. Um, it was on Game Pass. That's why I, I picked it up and tried it out. Um, and that then leads me to my second game, which was also a Game Pass game whose key art jumped out at me. And I was like, oh, that looks interesting. And then I read the little blurb on the like the store page or whatever so it's the book walker for all 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 accounts it seems like it's an indie game i wasn't familiar with with any of the developers or the publishers um but the premise is that you are a writer who's been uh essentially you're serving out like your parole because you've written something the government doesn't like and you go into other books to like retrieve items from the books that the government wants so you can earn time off your sentence. So it's got this very interesting kind of sci-fi premise. Um, and all the stuff outside of the book is in first person and all the stuff inside the book is like an isometric, like point and click almost type thing. So it's got like an interesting like gameplay gimmick to it. Um but I played like an hour of it and I was really not jazzed with the writing. It was very kind of on the nose, doing a lot of like wink, wink, like you, the character know that you're in a book, but you're interacting with characters in the book who don't know they're in a book. But then you find a character who does know that they're in a book and they're able to give you clues to be like, oh, don't touch that, that, you know, the the text says that that's, you know, a bad whatever. Um, and it had some weird bugs on the xbox that i i i had to restart the game at one point because i had like accidentally soft locked myself in a space um and i saw the day after that that the devs had been like hey we're putting out a patch on xbox because there were a bunch of issues so maybe i'll go back into it but um for the initial key art pulling me in and the initial hook of the premise i was not super thrilled with how the game was actually playing out there's like some turn-based combat in it as well which didn't feel great um but um certainly an interesting i i kind of want to get all the way to the end to give it like the the you know it seems like a lot of care and effort was put into it and i want to respect that but i was not jazzed by it that's fair um i <clears throat> sorry i was looking at the trailer here it's from mm. the creators of final station which is a game i played um years ago and oh, that... i've definitely seen that but i haven't played it 
Uh, that was a good game, but it's funny you mentioned that game also had bugs, and I think I had to restart it as well. So, <laughs> it's funny you just pulled that memory. That that game was like, I feel like the same exact thing you're describing with this one, where I went to the end just because I was curious how it ended. Like, mm-hmm. but it was very generic writing and gameplay, and uh, this at least looks really cool. I like that sort of isometric and then first person looks. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, my issue was I was in a room where I had to, like, pick up a barrel and move it out of the way so that I could get to, like, a secret door. And I had clicked the barrel and was moving it, and I couldn't click away from the barrel. Um, So I was just stuck moving this barrel around. I I think the barrel is your cursor now. Yeah. No, because then I couldn't move my character. I couldn't. You're going to get a barrel at your door in a couple days. The barrel's the player character now. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I'll probably go back to it just to see if the patch fixed anything. But um, yeah, interesting. Made the the game good. (laughs) Did it make the game better? Did Um, they put out? Did they put out a screenshot of the notes app apology? No, it was like that's how you know it's going to get better. Press release. (laughs) Um, Did they? And then I finished. I actually, this was like last last week or week before, because I think I posted about it in the Discord. But I finished Ace Combat. I rolled credits on Ace Combat Seven, and then I went back and I've replayed a couple of the missions since that time to earn more money to try to unlock. There's a sh- there's a plane that you unlock after beating the campaign, but I didn't have enough money to to buy it and uh, unlock it. So I'm trying to unlock it. Um, that game's really good. Maybe I'll play that. Yeah, next. yeah, it's really good. It's really fun. Um, I know I said last time I was on and I talked about Ace Combat that they had been talking in the mission briefings about a space elevator. And I was going to say, if I didn't get to play um, the, in a level at the space elevator, I was going to be upset. There are multiple oh. levels at the <gasps> yeah. space elevator. Yay. Um, and Isn't there I, one where you fly where you fly up the space elevator? I was going to ask if I could spoil the ending, but I, yeah. I've seen it. In so, yeah. Wow. Well, I guess I, I don't need to play it now. Sorry, well, but it's it's super cool. The last mission you're like fighting around the space elevator and you have to there are drones that have tactical information that they're trying to broadcast through the space elevator. Is there a wedding? Yes. <laughs> so one of the drones <laughs> flies down into like an access tunnel into the space elevator and you have to follow it down through the access tunnel and then that like caves in and you're like how do we get out? Up Battlestar Galactica. Basically yeah yeah it's super good that's awesome i'm jealous very fun i I, i've tried to play those games it's one of those genres where i don't like playing arcadey flight games they're just not for me Mm -hmm. um but that being said i want to know and live in the lore of that game because every time i see clips of it and touches of it i'm like fuck yeah give me that world building give me that lore yeah so i'm just trying to think give me a fucking i don't know maybe anime series give me a fucking cg series Ooh. like they did with gundam yeah just give give me some or give me a book just give me a fucking book i want to be in it but i don't <laughs> want to play the game that's the problem did I've you, got. jake did you see the png dog i did at the very end it's like the end of the the la- one of the last Aww. cut scenes the png dog is in um but yeah it was interesting because the storytelling the cutscenes between the mission briefings, it's like really disparate bits of like three different stories that as it goes on, you start to piece together where they're all going to come together before the game actually does it. And so then it becomes like, oh, I see how all the chess pieces are moving. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Dope. Cool. Um, those are the games. Well, actually, uh, I wanted to mention this quick because I forgot I did have a point. Uh, I did start playing Grand Theft Auto 4 on the Steam Deck after uh, Stu had talked about it last week and said it ran well. And it does run well, uh, and it looks great on the Steam Deck. Uh, I forgot how great Grand Theft Auto 4 is. It's so good. It's good. It's It's so good. The driving in it, it's not good driving, but it makes you feel like you're driving in New York city. You have like this yeah, b- yeah. boat, like, oh, it's just, and it, you go so fast. Um, I switched on TV. It looks a little rough. Uh, it's very clear. The only thing that isn't good is it's, it's 720 technically, but it is upscaled on the, on my OLED. 
So it looks great. It's just the anti-aliasing is awful everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else is clear. And then I was like, oh, let me play it on the Series X. But the Series X version is the 360 version, which just has Vaseline smeared on the camera. And it's just like a little bit blurry and not as great. So I, I picked the sharpness, but no anti-aliasing over the blurriness mm -hmm. of the uh, Xbox version. But that's sort of my like... Um, randomly pick up and play a game but i just forgot i forgot how great gta that whole intro too is great it's so good uh um, yeah and it's very uh yeah wild anyways um it is time for our favorite new segment here at uh subpixel local chat hq which is the wish list spotlight jake i am assuming you wrote this game here tell us all about this game yeah, so Synergy, as a a, a city building management simulator, city it seems building. like. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I am so happy that we are at a point in the history of video game development where game engines are to a place where we really can just make games look like whatever we want. Um, yeah, we're not in you know the 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 arms battle the arms race of photorealism anymore. We're to a point where people are like, hmm, I want to make a city builder that looks like a Mobius painting. And you can do that. Um, so I was immediately drawn in by the art style and then learning that it's like a little casual-ish city builder. Um, although it looks like from like the, the screen grabs on Steam and whatnot, there seems to be a fair amount of depth to... There's like tech trees and and like branching. I don't know if there's like branching narrative stuff. I don't know if it's going to be like um, Frostpunk in that regard, where you have like actions that have you know uh, uh, unresolvable consequences down the road. Um, but um, yeah, certainly looks very interesting, and if if nothing else, it looks very pretty. And that's like why I added it to the wish list spotlight. Neato. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks really cool. I love me a good city builder, especially uh, when you can manage weather seasons, extreme conditions, and natural disasters. And they do list Frostpunk as one of their inspirations. I forgot Frostpunk 2 is coming out soon. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't wait. City for Skylines 2. Making, making children work in Frostpunk is one of the <laughs> best mechan game mechanics anyone's ever released. Just saying. What are no labor laws? <laughs> it's uh, uh they're small uh, enough to climb into the engine compartment. Sarah so... Huckabee Sanders' favorite video game. <laughs> she can't fit in the engine compartment. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Um folks, I think that's gonna do it. I think that's gonna do it. Let me hit the button here that says outro. Uh, folks, we will be back this weekend playing something. <laughs> nope, playing, we won't be. Playing Final Draft. We're not doing anything. Oh, yeah, Jake, Sunday. Sunday. Jake, yeah. Sunday. Sorry, I was thinking this was the week. Never mind. Jake <laughs> is uh, streaming on Sunday. Uh, you're writing. I'm very excited for that. I think I'm gonna. we're maybe going to try to revisit some of my unproduced college screenplays and see if we can make them better <gasps> i bet you can um so I'm what sure time is that sunday sunday at uh, uh 2 p.m eastern sunday 2 p.m eastern tune into that um also jake skybox video is out on the youtube channel right now so please go watch that as well featuring the voice talents of me and other people save data people kyle That's correct um <laughs> humans and one squirrel <laughs> 